In 11 minutes, I traveled beyond death and returned. A fatal air crash brought me a near-death experience. When my soul came out of my physical body and returned to the womb of nature, I was fully embraced by the unconditional love of nature. It was a familiar feeling, as if that's where the circle of life started and ended. Hello, and welcome to Spirit Travels where we narrate the extraordinary experiences of people who have glimpsed the other side of death. My name is Maureen, and I will be your narrator on this journey. If you enjoy this content, please make sure to like and subscribe to support our channel. Now let's begin. Today's NDE is by Dr. Chung. On November 3, 2004, I arrived in Dureri, a rural town in Auckland in northern New Zealand. I came here to take an advanced cross-country glider training program. Unlike an airplane, a glider does not have any engine and relies on the upward air currents to lift it and carry it, remaining sometimes in the air for hours. This mechanic deeply fascinated me. I was born and grew up in the metropolis Hong Kong, a bustling concrete city. I loved nature as it brought me a sense of freedom. To fly high in the limitless sky was one of my biggest dreams. A year earlier, I attained a glider pilot license, and this year I came to New Zealand for the advanced cross-country training. I thought this must be the best time of my life. November 9th, 2004, the sixth day of the training program was a sunny and beautiful morning. I jumped onto the glider excitedly. It was my first solo trial flight on this high performance glider model. I completed the safety check systematically as usual and then sought permission from the flight traffic controller for the takeoff. Permission given. The engine pulling me started to roar the glider moved forward on the runway as the ropes pulled. As I moved the handle, the glider began to rise. Before me lay the clear blue sky with light scattered clouds. What a beautifully clear day with excellent visibility. Although I thought the model I was using had much better performance than my previous training models, I immediately realized that it was rather difficult to control, especially in the strong wind. When the glider quickly soared to 110 meters high, I noticed that it was lifting way too fast. At the same time, the glider began to shake and tilt to the left severely. It just kept climbing, reaching a dangerous climbing angle. I was losing speed. In that moment, I felt like Icarus inching too closely to the sun. I was alarmed by the danger. I tried to keep my wits and to stay calm and focused. I recalled what I learned in flying simulation. I tried to break the glider from the ropes, hoping to stabilize the glider and prepare for the emergency landing. However, it didn't work. The glider was lifting too fast and losing control. The wings could no longer support the weight of the body, and just as sharp as its ascent, the glider plummeted down like a broken kite. In about 10 seconds time, it crashed to the ground, falling from over 100 meters high. Bang! As the glider hit the ground, the whole compartment was smashed into pieces. Though the seat belt prevented me from falling out of the compartment, it went up and underneath my ribs. Some hard objects from the backside knocked the backside of my head. Before I was able to feel any pain, my five senses seemed to shut down. Simultaneously, I was swallowed by a world of silence and darkness, as if the power went out. The out-of-body experience. All of a sudden, the light switched on again. I felt being reconnected. My vision was somewhat fuzzy from that sudden change of brightness in the first second. Then a glimpse of light came into my eyes. 
bright yet warm and gentle, like the first ray of sunrise. The darkness is over. Welcome to the brightness, the golden light said to me. I found myself bathed in a sea of golden light, so peaceful and calm. I was fully embraced by a comforting love and gentleness. I also found my body dazzling, reflecting rays of golden light. The senses of warmth and love saturated me. I felt complete and infinite. I was composed of lights in that realm. I was a part of the light. I still had a body shape, but there was no boundary. Like how we see the sunlight but cannot tell its boundary? Or if you pour some alcohol into a glass of water, it doesn't dissolve, but it would mix perfectly into the water. It was incredible. The second thing I noticed was that I was not breathing and my heart had stopped beating. Or I should say, I no longer needed any breath or heartbeat. I found myself floating in the vacuum. As I was wondering if either my own weight or the gravity was lost, I looked down and I saw the trashed body of the glider. Fragments of glass and metals were scattered all over the ground. The glider's wings and tail were completely ruined. I looked closer and I saw a broken young man lying there, dying inside the compartment. His shirt was covered in blood. His wounds were bleeding badly. His forearm was broken. A white bone jutted out of his wrist. Even worse, the right ankle joint was horribly smashed and distorted. In horror, I realized this man looked just like me. That's my body. I knew I was dying. I could see that the dramatic crash from over 100 meters height had caused multiple fractures throughout my body. It was all covered with blood. I had been knocked unconscious and my heart trembled weakly. The brutal pressure from the tightened seatbelt on my ribs stopped air from going into the lungs. While my body below showed no signs of life, no consciousness nor feeling, Interestingly, I felt completely well and comfortable floating up above. I didn't have any wounds or feel any pain. All I felt was joy and peacefulness. In that split second, my soul had come out of my body, floating up on top of the glider in the air, watching myself dying. That was an incredible feeling. At the point of death, My body and soul separated. I was in dual existence. When my soul came out of my body, I felt like a new being, leaving behind all my old senses, thoughts, and emotions. I could still hear, see, and feel the surrounding world, and was self-aware of my inner mind. However, the cognitive processes were remarkably different. While body exists in a physical form, in that capacity, I no longer had any bodily boundaries or physical limitations. I was captivated by how the cognitive experiences of our body differed from that of the soul. Whilst our body is connected to the surrounding world through the five senses, our body relies on sensory cells to detect the outside stimuli and make the mapping to a particular group of regions within the brain where the signals were received and interpreted, such as images and smell. In contrast, the soul does not require sensory cells to connect to the universe at all. Instead, it works in a way similar to telepathy. In that different state, my vision and hearing actually followed my changing mind. In other words, I saw and heard what I thought about. I was in active rather than passive cognitive processes. My perceptions were no longer restricted by any physical object or distance because in that state, 
I comprehended things through its basic forms similar to energy. That was a brand new cognitive experience to me. Apart from the cognitive, my emotional responses were also significantly different. I had no fear, worry, grief, or any bad feeling, but only absolute peacefulness and harmony. My emotional responses were disconnected to the outside circumstances and environments. If I was severely injured normally, I should feel pain or sadness, but there, I only felt extreme calm and peacefulness. That situation reminded me of the schizophrenia disorder, which is characterized by the breakdown and disconnection of thinking, behavior, and emotions. At the same time, I no longer relied on sound, technically the vibration of air molecules, to communicate there. Instead, communication worked through an ultrasensory channel. It's a pure and direct communication through thoughts, functioning through a telepathic mechanism. If we compare this communication process with that of our physical body, the latter requires constant coding and decoding, and which is prone to misinterpretation and misunderstanding. The ultrasense communication is far more instant, direct, and effective. But where am I? I couldn't help wondering. In that sea of golden light, all that I felt was a gentle and incredible warmth and peacefulness, that which I had never experienced something so pure and divine in the physical world. There was neither an enchanting heaven nor a terrifying hell that I had grown up hearing, but only peacefulness and calmness. Wait, that felt familiar. Did I experience this before? Suddenly, a memory flashed through my mind. I recalled the moment when I was a fetus, nurtured and protected by the amniotic fluid in my mother's womb. I remembered feeling her warmth. I listened to her gentle heartbeats. The umbilical cord supplied me nutrients and endless love. At that time, I felt as if I was cradled in the womb of the universe. I was fully embraced by the sea of golden light. I was completely immersed with the universe. Through the light, I was fully embraced by the overwhelming, non-judgmental, and unconditional love of the universe, greater than anything, more beautiful than anything. I understood how much of the feeling of dying resembled that of being born. Perhaps life was a circle, departing and ending at the same point. Dialogue with God Would you like to go or to stay? A question awakened me from my deep thought. Someone was speaking to me from the source of light. Our communication did not work through the voice, but the mind, like telepathy. I tried to look at the source of light, but I could hardly see anything or any person other than the halo of light. I had no idea who was speaking to me, but I knew that was the source of the greatest love. He, quote unquote, didn't resemble any being in my familiar physical world but belonged to a higher divine entity. Perhaps it's what we called God. To go or to stay, I muttered. Does it mean I could choose between life and death? This is the last question of your life. He seemed to be able to comprehend my thoughts. I never thought that I would have an option. Should I stay? Should I go? Before making your decision, you may wish to see your life in review. As I was absorbed in a deep thought of this question, a tiny spot of light appeared suddenly. In the center of the spot, I saw myself when I was a baby. Then the light spread out in all directions, like a spider spreading silk to build an intricate spider web. I looked closer to the web and was surprised to find that every silk thread was connecting to time 
as well as the cause and effect of different people and incidents. The threads were inextricably linked to one another. They connected my different stages of life, interweaving and mapping my own web of life. My web was only one of the many others. Each of the individual webs was linked by silk threads, connecting our relationships with one another. In front of me was a giant nest of webs. I stepped forward, leaned my head down into the nest. It felt like soaking into water. The only difference was that I didn't need to breathe. I opened my eyes and found myself in a cinema with thousands of screens playing around me. Playing on every screen were episodes of the different moments in my 30 years of life, from childhood till the present, some of which I remembered, some of which I had long forgotten. I was intrigued by this fascinating experience, which I had never gone through or imagined. For the first time, I had a simultaneous panoramic picture of my entire life. The final answer. The life review deeply enlightened and awakened me. I realized that my whole life was interwoven by one core value, freedom. I had traveled to over 30 countries by the age of 30. I was eager to learn travel by land and by sea. I drove motorbikes, scuba dived, skied and climbed. I strive to push beyond my physical boundaries or bodily limitations and to pursue greater freedom. When those activities could no longer satisfy my increasing desire for freedom, finally last year, I realized my biggest dream of flying. I got my glider license and flew high in the sky, like a bird, through white clouds across the clear blue sky. I became totally free. I'd accomplished all my dreams before turning 30. It was on my 30th birthday that I didn't make a wish for the first time, and it was then that I realized that I was contented with my life. I stood there, struggling with the last question of my life. Let's go, was the first idea that flashed through my mind. All my dreams were accomplished. I had no regrets. If I would die at the best time of my life, all that I left behind were bright and beautiful memories. Wasn't this perfect? After all, the meaning of life wasn't about the duration, but the quality. I had always believed in that. Just when I was ready to leave, all of a sudden, I felt emptiness and pain. A small crack appeared in the middle of my heart and blood slowly flowed out. The deep chasm grew in me, and in seconds, half of my heart was already drained. An overwhelming sense of emptiness and remorse saturated me. I realized that I no longer had any dream. There was nothing in my life that held me back. I didn't need anybody and nobody needed me. I realized how lonely and empty my life was. I was never alive. I never embraced true freedom. In the past 30 years, I was only chasing after time. I created one dream after another to escape from my inner emptiness. All that I ran after was recognition, to prove that I could do something, anything, to prove my existence. In my entire life, I was living under other people's values and expectations. I came to understand that realizing a dream was less than having a dream. It's the first time in my life that I was standing between two extreme feelings, contentedness and loss, joy and sadness. Half of my heart was bright red, filled with dreams and freedom. The other half was empty and dark, lonely and confused. I experienced the two sides of life's coin. Is it the final judgment? Are we evaluating the good and the bad? 
the moral and evil of life? I asked. I didn't know where that place was, nor did I know which decision I should make. Should I leave when my dreams were accomplished, or should I stay and truly learn to be alive? I honestly didn't know how to answer this very final question. There is no such thing as final judgment or evaluation for right or wrong, good or evil. All these things are purely human convention, existing in the world of polarized ideologies. We are now in a united world. Everything exists in its pure and basic form. If you choose to go, you may exhale your last breath and walk toward the source of light. If you choose to stay, then close your lips and keep breathing. Just walk back from the light. I looked down to my lifeless body trapped in the trashed glider. I still kept my last breath, but I didn't know if I should keep it. Some time passed and I was standing still, unable to make up my mind. It seems that you are not ready to answer your final question. Your wisdom and vision are not fully unlocked yet. Your heart is still chained. This is your own question, so only you can answer. In that case, come back when you are ready to make the decision. Will I come back to choose again, I asked? When the time is right, you'll find the way back. I was deeply torn by the extreme feelings of contentment and emptiness. I couldn't make a decision. All of a sudden, the screens dissolved and the golden light quickly vanished. I started to melt down. The eye on the ground got back into consciousness again. My soul was pressed back to the body. I sucked back the last breath into my lungs. I couldn't move my body, but I could feel my heart pumping gently. At the same time, enormous pain flooded through every part of my body. It's killing me. But pain also assured me of one thing. I was alive. Apart from pain, my senses were recovered one after another. I heard an ambulance siren and cries and yells of the rescue team. Then I smelled the stink of blood mixing with burnt plastic and the fresh scent of cut grass. At last, I opened my eyes and saw myself trapped in a ruined compartment. White bones protruded out of my right wrist. My ankle joints were completely fractured. He's alive! Come on, hurry! The rescue team found me in excitement. Those were the first words I heard when I returned. The rescue team took 30 minutes to get me out of the demolished glider and send me to the hospital. In the ambulance, I heard, The accident occurred during the glider launch. He fell over a hundred meters onto the grassland next to the runway. We ran there from the control tower at the first instance. He was unconscious for 11 minutes. In 11 minutes, I caught a return journey, traveling through life and death. Returning from death. As soon as I arrived at the hospital, I was rushed through various scans and examinations. There are multiple fractures on your right arm. We will first tackle the bone fragments and then implant a stainless steel plate to stabilize the fractured bones. The posterior cruciate ligament, the medical and lateral ligaments on the left knee are all broken, possibly because of the sudden hyperflexion and hyperextension at the crash. We can do reconstruction surgery to repair the torn ligaments, the doctor explained to me. Fortunately, the other injuries are not critical except your right ankle. There are severe fractures. The scan results shows that the blood vessels are damaged. Even if we use stainless steel rods to stabilize the bones, without blood supply, the bone tissues will die and the bones will collapse. I'm sorry, I'm afraid it is necessary to amputate your right foot. We need your consent to do the surgery. No, I disagree, I said weakly yet firmly. 
that may cause severe infection and risk your life. Then don't save me, just leave me alone. I'd been there anyways. Those were my last words before I fell into coma in the following three days. Because I clearly refused to do the amputation, the doctors had to respect my decision and could only use stainless steel rods to stabilize the bones on my right foot. However, they reiterated that without blood circulation, the bones would gradually collapse and die. Falling down from 100 meters of height, the odds of surviving were already slim. It's even a double miracle that I didn't have prominent damage to my internal organs. It took a month until my overall medical conditions were stable enough to be transported back to Hong Kong. Upon arrival, I was immediately taken to one of the best local hospitals. Day after day, the regular scans only reconfirmed one thing, a vascular necrosis. The doctors explained that because all the blood vessels were damaged, there was no blood circulation in my right foot at all. Medically, there was no surgery or drug that could cure my foot. After staying in hospital for four months, I was allowed to continue my rehabilitation at home. Meanwhile, I was also given a government registration card for people with disabilities, on which I was classified as permanently disabled. Nonetheless, I didn't give up. Instead, I was emotionally stronger than anyone else was. Once I was discharged from hospital, I persistently searched for alternative treatments on my wheelchair. I had tried Chinese medicine, Qigong, acupuncture, Twina massage, medical diet, Shu Hui therapy, and many others. I even spent a fortune on spirit mediums, psychics, and witch doctors. However, all those efforts were in futility, leaving me feeling like a fool. Every hopeful attempt ended in disappointment. None of my hard effort had any return. I felt like a hopeless sheep waiting to be slaughtered. As none of the alternative therapies showed any encouraging results at the time, I lost my faith to carry on. I was not hopeful for a miracle. Like many other patients, I fell into the trap of tragic victim. All I saw was doom and gloom. There was no future. Faith, perseverance, and determination had vanished, replaced by pain and despair. During the endless search for treatments, I gradually became aware that deep inside, I wasn't most fearful of death, but instead, it was the brutal reality to live in permanent disability. Yes, I survived the accident, but if my physical freedom was robbed, then was this really a miracle? I fell from the climax of life into the darkest hole. The disability not only took away my health, but also my career prospect. The huge medical expenses posed a heavy financial burden on me. Even worse, my girlfriend also left me at that time. Everything I worked so hard to achieve in the past 30 years was all taken away. I became resentful and depressed. I became more and more dependent on drugs and painkillers to relieve the intolerable pain. I hopelessly awaited death to cease my pain and to set me free. I swore to the god, kill me, you're the murderer. The signs. Frustrated, depressed and exhausted, I stopped fighting. I gave up attending treatments, doing rehabilitation exercises or seeing people. To kill my excessive time, I spent my afternoons just sitting on my wheelchair in a small park near my home. I did nothing other than sitting there staring at the surroundings. I stopped thinking. My mind was empty. Time was suspended. Sometimes I was so withdrawn that even my own existence became weightless and transparent. When I was entirely spaced out, deeply relaxed, 
it was somewhat like entering a trance state. I gradually got used to stepping back and seeing things from a distance without any judgment or emotions attached. The world became quiet. People, noises, traffic, they were all remote, distant, and irrelevant to me. I didn't have any emotions, neither grief nor joy, but only peacefulness and calmness. I gradually was tuned to my life on the wheelchair. I liked sitting in sunlight to enjoy the sheer warmth and comfort. When I realized how much that feeling echoed the near-death experience, I couldn't help wondering if I was unconsciously trying to recover my splendid near-death experience in the physical world. Perhaps I was longing to re-experience that divine and supreme harmony and peacefulness of the near-death experience. The inner peacefulness brought me a new vision with clarity. On those days, sitting in the park, I learned to listen to nature's language. I discovered that the universe was always communicating with us through different signs in nature. There was a saying that when you want something, the entire universe conspires in helping you to achieve it. I found that when we were looking for an answer to something, the natural world would show to us what we needed to see. We just needed to pay attention and learn how to read the symbolic signs and listen to the guidance. My first time reading the signs of the universe was one afternoon hanging out as usual in the park. It was a fine day. I saw from far away a burnt spot on the grass lawn, possibly caused by a discarded cigarette. I came closer. I saw a patch of new grass emerging from the burnt soil. I was impressed by its interesting growth, shape, which looked like a flying bird. The next thing that caught my attention was a chrysalis, about three centimeters in size, hanging under a leaf. A butterfly was slowly emerging from the chrysalis, spreading its wings and making its first flight. I was captivated by this fascinating transformation. A while later, just when I was on my way home, my wheelchair almost ran over a dark little thing. No, it wasn't a bug, but a little dark cicada shed left behind an emerged cicada. New grass on burnt soil, chrysalis transformed to butterfly, cicada emerged from nymph skin. I tried to piece together the puzzle. They didn't seem to be random coincidences, but rather resonant symbols. I closed my eyes and listened to the guidance from nature. The puzzle suddenly came to light. Transformation. Transformation was the answer. I understood that I needed not passively wait for a miracle to come or desperately struggle for one because the self-healing power lied inside of me. I was ready to transform and be reborn. I departed from the paradoxical role of tragic, ill victim and transformed myself to a professional therapist. I was indeed a professional cognitive psychologist before the accident. I always had strong interest in human subconsciousness and dream. My expertise was in hypnosis, psychological analysis, consultation, and therapy. I had no particular religion, nor a blind belief in science. All that I believed were the potentials and power of life. Thank you for listening. If you have had an NDE that you would like to share, please email us at travelsinthespirit.com at gmail.com. Until next time, God bless.